everybody. Just doing another patch on a ceiling. This is a water damage. Above was a P-trap plumbing leak. The plumber had to come in and have access to this. So they cut out the small area that was water damage so they can obviously get access to fix the P-trap that's leaking. So once he got it all fixed in, we got called in here to get this all patched back in and coated and textured. So with this, just like any patchwork above ceilings, like put down some plastic on the ground. If need be, plastic off the walls to contain the mess. Because on this one, we're going to have to cut it back slightly to remove more of the damaged areas that wasn't cut out prior. Cut out the areas. You just want to square it up. If you don't have a level or T-square, you can use a chalk line. If you don't have none of those, anything that's straight, a piece of wood, a level, anything that's straight you just need to cut out the area straight everybody we go into these jobs they just cut it out however it's so easy just to take something and square it up with a pencil and just cut out a nice square piece it's so much easier this process right here i'm telling you everybody if you had to do some drywall in your house and you're not comfortable patching it up or doing mudding and texturing the easiest thing you can do to probably save some money is just square up the area. One by two, two by two, four by four, just a nice square patch. And then if you start calling around getting estimates, you'd be surprised just by having the area nice and squared up and look like it's ready for sheetrock, you can save some money on your project. I get calls and pictures sent, jobs where the whole ceiling's caving in. Just a simple process of squaring up the area. It kind of makes it look like you know what's going on to the person you're hiring and you got somewhat of a clue that you need to square it up. It just makes everything easier. You'll save a few dollars. That way it's squared up and when you start calling around to get estimates, you'll be like, I just need to get this two by two patch patched in, please. Here's a picture of it. Get a basic price. It just makes everything easier for you, makes easier on getting bids, getting the job done quickly and efficiently, demo, debris. That way the guys are just sitting here. They have to just patch an area. Not, they're not trying to stick around cutting out the area square that should have been cut out square from the get-go. But it is what it is. So if you have a patch like this that's unsquare, you're going to have to square it up first. If you're lucky, you can cut center to center on the studs. That way you can have something to screw the – New and old sheetrock, too. That's why they, we like to cut it center on the stud. That's what center on the stud means. Cutting it back to the center so I can get one screw in the old sheetrock on the stud and then screw on the new sheetrock on the stud. Center of the stud, we like to do these patches. If there's no studs and you're not able to cut center of the stud, then just add wood backing. Anything works for wood backing, one by twos, two by fours, wood sheeting. They have these metal clips out there for patching. They're all right. I used them here and there. I just use them for like hard to hard reach spots. That's the only time I use those metal clips. It's easier just to buy some one by twos. I like to use one by threes, honestly. They're a little more expensive than one by twos, but they don't split on you when you use them. One by fours are awesome if you can get your hands on those. And of course, a two by four. But you just do what you got. Once you get it all patched in, you want to add plenty of screws. You're going to add screws on the existing studs that are there. You're also going to add screws on the outside edge and the old sheetrock. And then you're backing. The one stud in the center of this patch is not enough. You need one on each side of every patch. Every job I go to, they just say, oh, yeah, the patches are ready. Just come in, and they just put a screw in the center. Then we have to take the screw out, take the patch out, add wood backing. So you always have to add wood backing on both sides of the patches is ideal. Smaller patches, you get away with one stud in the middle, just like a small patch, like a six-inch patch. But one-foot, two-foot patches, you're going to need studs on each side of the patch. That just makes everything nice and tight. I'm sure it'd hold up if you taped it and mud it and textured it. It might not crack. But we don't want to go through all this work of mudding and texturing and cleaning up for it to crack out. So always just add some wood backing. 
If you don't have any wood backing, just go buy yourself a eight foot stick. They're two bucks and you'll have more than enough for any patch job you have to do. With this, there's a gap, so I'm just going to go ahead and pre-fill it. I'm using a quick set mud. Of course, I don't recommend using these quick set muds if you've never done any try to mudding, drywall patching. Just use an all-purpose joint compound. All-purpose joint compounds, if you do make a mistake, you can sand away your mistake. That's the beauty with joint compounds. The only problem with the joint compounds, you're going to have to let the coat dry overnight. The reason I use these quick set muds is because I have to finish these jobs in one trip. One coat, let it set up. Second coat, let it set up. If need be a third coat, let it set up. And then texture. Texturing, I use an all-purpose joint compound. I never use a hot mud or quick set mud for texturing. I know some jobs, they say, well, I need to get it painted today. I just say, okay, well, we recommend you use a joint compound because it's a smoother, creamier, Gives it a better finish. Hot muds, quick set muds, they're more coarse. They're meant for coating. They're not meant for texturing. So just stick to an all-purpose joint compound, and it'll make your life a lot easier. If you're more professional, then you can use these hot muds, but just stick to the joint compounds. Get it all coated. We do drywall every day, so sometimes we can get away with a nice, heavy first coat with a hot muds and then slick it out and it almost like a second coat but you're going to need at least two coats maybe three tight coats will give you a nice patch when in doubt you could even skim it out again texture is not meant to cover up imperfections your patch needs to be perfectly smooth before you texture it is this patch ready for texture? All you ask yourself, if I paint it now, would it look good under paint? No? Well, you're going to need another coat. Patching needs to be smooth, nice and level, sanded or slicked out, ready for texture. Texture is just a cosmetic finish. And of course, depending on where you are, you might have a smooth texture. Out here, I have a lot of different textures. This is like a skip trowel style of a skip trowel texture. But if you have a smooth texture, you would just finish it off with a tight skim coat with an all-purpose joint compound, a real tight coat, and then turn around and sand it before you primer and paint. But yeah, easy patch job like this. It's like a two-by-two two patch, less than that, but there's still some work involved getting it all cut back. Get it all sheetrocked, tape coated two times, and then we follow through with a texture using an all-purpose joint compound. Skip trowels like these are real common in this area. I have several videos on the channel. I have a whole playlist of just textures. Skip trowels like this. So if you want to learn how to do a different type of texture, your best bets, you know, maybe practice, watch a few videos, see people's techniques. Notice I'm using a six inch knife when I do the texture on here. A lot of guys like to use these big 18 inch, 24 inch knives for skip trowel. That's fine if you're doing all new ceilings, new walls, brand new. For patchwork, just stick to a six inch knife. If you master a six inch knife, then you can move on to a bigger knife. But everybody wants to jump in and start using these big knives when they can't even use a six inch knife. So no need. No need to go out and buy every knife that's out there. Basic six inch knife and maybe a 10 inch or 12 inch knife is more than enough to do your basic repairs. Honestly, I have a lot of knives that I carry with me, but my go-to drywall knives are my six inch knife and then I have a 12 inch knife. And I can pretty much do most of my work with those two knives. I have bigger knives I use when I start floating out large stuff and stuff like that. 8 inch knife I use for smaller stuff, but my go to knives are always a 12 inch and a 6 inch knife. But yeah, simple video patching this up. Easy, easy, easy. Do it yourself repairs. I have a whole playlist of patchwork like this from electrical, plumbing patches. I have a playlist of textures. So there's a whole lot of videos in this channel. If you haven't done it already, go ahead and subscribe. And if you also haven't done it already, go ahead and Leave a like and comment. What these do is help us get this channel found. The channel's grown, but I like it to grow faster. The more it grows, 
The more videos I'll make, better videos I'll make. So, hey, thanks for viewing. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for liking.